Hello everyone, it's Gumrath here with Gumrath Games, and today I'm going to be talking about 10 things that you probably did not know about pet battles. Now remember, if you found anything on this list helpful or new, do not be ashamed at all to like and subscribe, and even if nothing was new and you just enjoyed the sound of my melodious voice, you are allowed to like the video anyways. Okay, let's get started. So number one, did you know that the Wicked Soul, Ghastly Kid, and the Unborn Valk have a glitch that can make it so that they never come back to life after they haunt a target so if you haunt and then kill that target with another creature that has a multi-hit move like flurry slicing winds batter and triple snap and you kill that target with two uh with the second or third hit from your multi uh multi move attack your haunt user will stay dead this, however, is not triggered by Blitz or Thrash or other multi-turn moves like Barrage or Make It Rain from Little Bling that we are aware of. And the important thing to note here is that it must be the second or third attack of the multi-hit move that actually kills the target and not the dot itself. Um, this does not work for undeads, though. So if your undead is haunted, um, there is no fear that they're haunt user will not come back to life due to their immunity rounds number two did you know that when two haunt users face each other and they both cast haunt the one that goes second just dies it's an insta kill mechanic and there's not even a round of immunity your pet just goes the way of the fishes also you can never double haunt a target if you do so the second pet that you haunt with will die and not come back after the haunt expires one last thing that um, you might want to know about Haunt is that if you have multiple pets alive or at least one pet alive in your back line and you're facing an undead during its round of immunity, you can simply dodge the damage with Haunt. Um, so that's a little tip for you. Number three, did you know that there are harmful spells that can be applied through dodge, a liftoff, or a burrow? These are spells that affect the ground itself or the target, uh, like the targeted area the targeted team rather than just that specific pet um these are all trap spells which are like whirlpool geyser minefield ice tome um elementium bolt and cyclone and etc small side note you can stack all of these abilities and these abilities um they can be dodged on their detonation round but a lot of them you don't know when it's gonna go off especially like magma trap uh from the little magma rage leaner from ragnaros uh but even when your opponent is dodging you feel like you're not wasting a turn by applying those traps a couple more moves that don't actually apply through dodge that you might think that they should is sticky grenade uh wild winds and bombing runs these seem to all target the pet itself not just the ground Okay, number four. Did you know that there are a handful of attacks that can actually hit through a blinding poison? One of the most common ones that people know about is Nocturnal Strike. But did you know that Bone Barrage, as well as Banana Barrage, can hit through a poison or a blind? Now, these multi-hit moves are unique in the fact that even after extensive testing, um, all of the Barrage spells will not hit through blinds except these two. Another ability that actually can still hit, and hit through a blinding effect is tampanic tantrum ability now it's not very common pet it's on the landros xt and little xt that can be purchased from the blizzard store um and the landros xt i think that's a trading card game pet so that's pretty rare and expensive so you don't run into it often but um the two pets in the game that have it can still damage at least the frontline pet while being blinded Okay, number five. Did you know that when an undead dies, even the first round before the second round of immunity kicks in, it deals 25% less damage? This was a change that came about during Legion to bring them a little bit more in line with the other uh, pet racials. They're still very powerful being able to attack uh, twice even after they're quote-unquote dead, which is significantly more than other pets can do, even uh, mechanical type pets. That's why they're still so prevalent in PvP. Number six, did you know that boss pets in the game have a buff called Elite, which reduces all damage by 50%? 
This can be found on the Tiny Terrors of Tanan pets, as well as the ones that you fight out, or a couple of them ones that you fight in the Wailing Cavern scenario. Uh, this is a simple way for Blizzard to quote unquote increase the difficulty of certain pets. Uh, there are also boss pets that you'll find a very similar buff on um, out in the Argent, or not Argent, excuse me, the um, Celestial Tournament. Anyway, number seven. Did you know that certain pets can attack uh, or can have attacks from other families? Just because you're playing an undead doesn't mean it will only have moves that are strong versus humanoids. They may also have flying type attacks or aquatic attacks or so on. This is one reason it's so fun to collect pets from all over Azeroth because you can build teams in totally unique ways that can both surprise opponents in battle and even yourself sometimes. Number 8. Did you know that there's a vendor in Dalarand who will sell you a shoulder enchant that allows you to gather pet charms as well as battle stones and other useful items for pet battling? It's called the Zookeeper Enchant, and it sells for between 160 and 200 gold, depending on your reputation. It's super useful, and it's something that anybody who does pet battles definitely should have on all their characters. Number 9. Did you know that there's double counter pets? This means there are pets that both take less damage and deal more damage to a particular type of pet. Examples would be snails... Uh, are double counters to elementals, spiders and grubs are double counters to humanoids, etc. I've got a whole video talking about the best double counters from every family, and I'll leave a link to that in the description. Number 10. Did you know that if you're doing the quest to get the Falcoswar mounts, each and every one of those quests will grant you a battle stone, which will fully level up any pet to level 25, even from level 1? They're super easy to do. And all you have to do is have at least a couple level 25 pets in order to complete the quests. But it's just a nice way to grab a couple free level 25 pets. Anyway, that wraps up this list. If you found anything here helpful, make sure to drop a like and subscribe. It was a pleasure gaming with you and take care.